Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video here, what I would like to talk about is how to effectively and successfully deal with the patient who previously had a very, very bad experience in phlebotomy. Now, throughout your phlebotomy career, you are going to encounter patients um, who come in and they all have different personalities, of course, but you're going to encounter the ones who come in who's happy for the most part, for what it's worth, rather, because they know at this location everyone is professional, everyone is kind, and they do their job very well, and they always have a pleasant visit. You are going to encounter the ones who come in and they are just miserable. There is nothing that you can do that's humanly possible to make them smile. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to make them smile. All right? <laughs> nothing. You can show them a check for a million dollars and they'll just look at you like... So, don't take that personal. Um, so, that's, that's pretty much it with that. You are going to encounter, you know, the good patients, the bad, happy, sad, all of that. But there is the one patient, to me who stands apart than the rest and that is the patient who verbalizes to you that they just had a very very bad experience in phlebotomy this patient requires um a lot more than the average patient now this is not to say of course that this patient is going to be treated any more different than anyone else because everyone's treated the same of course but with this patient there are a lot more key factors that you need to take into consideration all right so let me break down the scenario okay the patient comes in this that and the third you do all administrative duties and now the patient is in a phlebotomy chair the patient verbalizes to you, say, oh man, I just left my doctor's office and man, what a horrible, horrible, bad experience it was. You know, I hope this experience is going to be better. Boom. At this moment here, there is a lot, and I mean a lot of pressure placed on you. A lot of pressure placed on you. And what are you going to do? You're not going to fold, are you? You're not going to fold. Nah, you may be nervous, you may, you know, be a bit uncomfortable about it, you may have butterflies or whatever, but that's a common feeling, it's natural, but you are going to step your game up, you're going to put your game face on, alright, you're going to strap on them gloves and get busy, in your lab coat, and get busy, alright, this patient here is why you make your money so to speak this is why you were hired as a phlebotomist this is the one all right now in my experience over the years this is what worked for me when dealing with a patient like this the first thing you do you remain professional and of course you always remain professional but what professionalism looks like to the patient, what it means to the patient, is you take your job very seriously. You do not play around. You know policies. You know procedures. You know protocols. You know rules and regulations. You know right from wrong. You know the do's and don'ts. You know how to deal with patients who come in different reasons different attitudes all of that you effectively and successfully know how to deal with these patients that's what professionalism looks like to the patient now one may think and say well you know what maybe i can ask this patient you know what happened what, what was so wrong or so bad about that visit but stop right there you don't want to do that you may not want to do that because think about it this patient has verbalized to you that they previously had a very bad experience. 
most people do not like to relive bad experiences. Now this now this experience is not like returning some Christmas gifts at Kohl's during the holiday season when those lines are nightmares. Nah, this ain't that kind of experience, folks. This one is personal. This is a personal experience. So you may not want to speak to them about that. What you want to do is use your imagination. Okay, consider the entire phlebotomy process at this point from start to end. When you first put your gloves on to when you're thanking a patient for choosing your facility. And what could have went wrong that made this visit, that previous visit for the patient so bad? Okay. Could it be just a professionalism? It could be. You have no idea how much of an impact professionalism is in people's lives. It is a great deal. I'm telling you, it really is. A lot of patients are very, very keen on professionalism. Or maybe it can be the blood draw. Maybe this patient does have bad veins or small, tiny, not bad, small, tiny, deep veins. And maybe the previous phlebotomist stuck this patient three, four times. You know, which is not acceptable in most places, no more than twice. Maybe it was that. You have to consider this phlebotomy process. Okay? So if it was a professionalism that made the experience so bad previously, I'm going to be professional throughout this whole ordeal. So you already one up now. Okay? Maybe if the patient does have deep, small, tiny veins, a hard stick, then you are going to inform the patient of this. You are going to speak to the patient and let them know say mr you know sir or, or ma'am you have very small tiny veins and you know it's going to be a hard stick but i am going to do my best and if i do not obtain a blood sample on my first try you know if you wish i can bring in someone who is equally qualified if not even more qualified to um, deal with situations like this inform the patient of what's going on and let them know Maybe that was it. Maybe the patient requested a butterfly needle because they have a phobia of straight needles. But the phlebotomist insisted on using a straight needle. You don't know what happened at that previous visit. And you're not going to ask. It, this is in my experience. If you want to ask, then you ask. But in my experience, I don't. So as long as you consider the whole entire phlebotomy process and the things that could have possibly went wrong, you just make sure you do those things right. Now, you may not obtain the blood on the first try, but that's perfectly fine, okay? Perfectly fine. But as long as you inform the patient and let the patient know what's going on, okay? You can even, um, you know, tell this patient, you know, how experienced you are. You know, look, you know, I have five years experience, so, you know, um, I'm not a rookie. So, you, you know, you're dealing with someone who is highly qualified um, in hard sticks and, and let them know. It's the small things that's going to mean something when dealing with a, a patient like this. So there you have it, my friends. OK, again, just be professional, of course, throughout the whole ordeal and consider the entire phlebotomy process, not the administration part of it, the clinical. Once they get in that chair and you strap your gloves and lab coat on, you consider what could have went wrong. I'm going to make sure I do it right. And that's that. So, I hope this information was good. Alright? Um, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, you just want to talk about phlebotomy, I'm your man. I'm here for you. We're here for each other. Let's get those veins. <laughs>